Now, as we're using uh, Snapchat, um, most of what you can do is in the app, but then there are outside of the app, um, for example, creating your own geo filters, you would do that on on the website. Now they changed this, so let me just find it again. Create Snapchat filter for business. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Here it is. I'm not exactly sure from the main page. How did I get to this from the main page? So I'm going to copy the, the link into the notes. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see. For business. There should be a place. It is a filter now going in through for business for Snapchat. It asks me to log in and do other stuff. So maybe you can do this. Um, if you want to, there must be a way to get to it a little easier. It was very easy when I taught it last time, but now they seem to have moved it. Here's what you can do if you search create Snapchat filter for business, hopefully, you get the top result, maybe this will be the first time in your life you click on an ad, but uh, you get the first result, create.snapchat.com slash snapchat slash filter. So that's where I want to go, I'll put that in the notes. But this is where you can get a preview, you don't have to pay for anything at all at the moment, you can get a preview of what, um, what I want to show you here, how to use business. Um, Snapchat. Okay, it seems to be create dot Snapchat. So it's the difference between filter and lens is that lens is kind of animated. Yes, that's the big difference. Okay, here it is. It's not that bad actually. Create dot snapchat dot com that's it so to create filters lenses so we'll look at this for a moment um, you I don't think at the moment you can quite create it on the uh, on the device and I, I would think it'd be very cumbersome because you have to set up a lot of options so it'd be very annoying on the device so definitely you want to do this on a computer, laptop, whatever, uh, maybe even on a tablet you can do this. But since it will be typing, you might want to do this on a real computer. Create.snapchat.com. Now what we get here is, okay, there's product, design, dates, location, and checkout, also known as pay. So do I want a filter or do I want the lens? Well, the filter is going to be some sort of like frame upon a photo or video. And then the lens is going to be more of an animated sort of thing, augmented reality sort of thing. So either or of those could be useful, but perhaps as a plain filter at the moment, something to get, to get started with. So just for the notes. We have product. Design, dates, location, purchase. So pick either a more static filter or an animated lens. Design, we'll see here, use a template or create your own and graphic design skills necessary. 
uh, if you create your own. If you use the fil if you use the built-in templates, they're pretty nice, but your your filter will look the same like someone else's because it's a template. If you're going to create your own, hopefully you know a little bit of graphic design. Uh, what is good alignment and uh, color combinations and that sort of thing. Uh, even if, even if you don't, you can still create something. But again, all of these look good because they have graphic designers on the payroll that design them. Um, dates. How long to um, have the filter available? More days, more money. Just like in the real world, I want to have my billboard on the corner, you know, in the gas lamp district. Well, for one weekend, you can pay $1,000, and for five weekends, you can pay $5,000. I don't know. Um, I don't know what those prices, but the longer you have an advertisement in the digital world, as, it, as, as in the real world, the more it costs. One thing that's interesting about doing this advertising in the digital world is that you can cover a bigger location, a bigger physical location. Whereas that, that uh, billboard, well that's one billboard on one street corner, you have to buy more billboards on more street corners, and there's no billboards on that street corner that are available to me. That's a, that's a downside. In the digital world, you can make these, they call them technically geofences. A fence geographically, geofences. Set up a geofence. Uh, wherever you delineate, delineate, the filter is active. So with, if you're within these boundaries, if you're in this block, the filter will be there, people will see it, people will see your business, etc. If they're outside of the geofence, they wouldn't see it. That's why being here in Sara Mesa, when I was playing with Snapchat, it said, oh, you're in, you're in the area, you're in the boundaries of Sara Mesa, uh, here's this uh, filter. Because I'm here at San Diego Continuing Education, it, it, it gave me that filter. If I was across the street at the, um, what's the hotel over there, the Marriott Hilton, whatever it is, the one right over there, if I was over there, it would say I'm there because that's its, I mean, it's geofence. And of course, purchase. All major credit cards accepted. And I would use a credit card for all of this. Credit card offers you a better level of fraud protection. Use a debit card, you know, the money's transferred relatively faster and it's your real money out of your account. When you use credit cards, it's credit, it's fake money. And so uh, the credit card companies can help you file disputes and all of that. Like I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't know I was paying for, you know, three years worth of filters and I'm getting charged $10,000. Uh, well, you can uh, dispute it a lot easier with credit card companies than with your credit union where it's real money. Alright, so just to check it out, I am going to select a filter. I have here design, upload your own. I have various themes, prom. Apparently, prom is coming up. So I'm going to select here some kitties at the prom. That's going to appear there. I can do some changes with text and such, but the defaults that happen from the built-in templates are often designed very well already because uh, there are areas that it automatically says area may be cropped by on shorter devices and up here too. So if you're making your own design, you make it really tall or whatever, this is already telling you that there's areas, depending on the person's device, it may or may not show there, so you don't need, uh, you, you can um, turn that on or off. So there's prom, what else do we have at the moment? Birthdays, baby showers, date night, food and bars. Okay, I've got a business. I'll select business. None of these are that great for a business. Happy shopping. For VIP. There are these submission guidelines. Uh, we are advertising on their network, but just like in the real world, if you want to put your ad on the radio or TV, there are guidelines. So you should check those out, and it's usually the ones about community standards, about you know vulgarity and 
all of that. Let's say I'm just going to pick whatever. I think that one of prom is really fun, so I'll go with that one. Next. OK, dates. Um, right now it's suggesting two days. Today, Friday and Saturday, from 3 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday, so 24 hours. Um, it hasn't told me prices yet. That'll be on the next screen. Uh, you can buy them annually, so you can buy these on the long term. Let's just say for the moment, I'll just choose the one day, 3 p.m. to 3 p.m., Friday to Saturday. Next. Okay, here's where you start to get then charged, or figuring out the price of how much it's going to cost. You see a map, you can... Um, you know, go to a specific location. Over here, it's up, it's up at Santa Monica for some reason. Let me get back to us down here. Let's see, where am I at? That's still Long Beach. Carlsbad. Okay, here we go. So, um... Here we are. San Diego Continuing Education, North City. OK, so there's us exactly right there. Uh, so what I, I found the particular location I'm, uh, I'm trying to create this filter at. We have square footage. Search for a location, draw a fence, and then how much it's going to cost. So when I go to the button here, draw a fence, I then set points. So if I then click to start to make a shape, I'm going to encompass the North City Center campus back to the starting point. So that is about 69,000, or let's say 70,000 square feet. That's going to cost $5 for my filter to be active for 24 hours. So when people come in today until tomorrow 3 p.m. and they're on Snapchat, my filter about that cats at the prom would appear for them. Now, if I go back to the dates and I say, let me let me, let me run it until the end of the month, 3 p.m. to you know 11 p.m. Uh, from now until the until the end of the month. It seems to still say five dollars. I don't believe that. It didn't change the date here yet. Oh well. Oh okay. I see. What did it do? Okay, from here to here. There it is, okay. There we go. So from there to there, 3 to 11. Okay, there it is. So April 20th to April 30th, $25. So not, a, not quite a week, but a few days, 70,000 square feet, um, $25, not so bad. Now this does definitely add up the, the more, square f more square footage. I want to make a... Uh, a Snapchat filter that covers all of San Diego. I hope you have a million dollars because mm -hmm. that is you're really going to be charged that much. It is square feet. Seventy there's seventy thousand square feet in this building. Imagine all of San Diego. So for fun, uh, I think one time what we did was I I made a geo filter around Qualcomm Stadium. So a lot of people are going to be there for sporting events, whatever it's called nowadays. Sorry. Um, a lot of people are going to be there and um, for uh, sporting events or uh, music events and such. So out of curiosity, let's see if we can find the stadium. Uh, where is it at? Um, I think I'm lost. So stadium. It's not called Qualcomm anymore. Is that still called Qualcomm? or? Am I crazy? No, SDC. Oh, okay, yes, yes, yes. Um, now where is it? Uh, Jack Murphy Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there it is, yes. Okay, so, um, yep, there it is. So let's say, okay, I want to make a geo filter over the whole stadium um, so that uh, all of the people that are at the concert will, will see my product. So I'm going to go, let's say, all the way around the environs, even where they're, you know, tailgating and everything. So I'll just cover all of that. 
That is 6 million square feet, okay, just for the stadium and the parking lot. $560 uh, for, uh, from Friday to Monday, a week and a few days. Not a huge amount of money, but it is $560. But for that whole time, my filter could be there. I don't doubt that when there are also big events happening, when U2 comes around again, or when some other band or big or team or something comes around, I don't doubt that the prices go up a little bit, or a lot of bit, because it's more valuable to them to charge you because there's going to be more people in traffic. Maybe there aren't really any events happening, big ones, at the moment. Now, there's a lot of, um, I think, um, aren't there a bunch of uh, Padres games happening at the moment at Petco? So I bet if we go there and try to uh, geofence Petco, um, that'll be, or Coachella, yeah. Go, 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 get, uh, go put a filter around Coachella. So, so here's, let's go Petco right here. Now, what is this warning here? Warning, this is going to be expensive. This location is not available. Oh, someone else purchased it. Uh, oh, actually, that's only 4.28 to 4.28 until 11 p.m. 4.28. Okay, that's fine. Um, they not blacked it out, but they bought it themselves. That could have happened. So let's just say, okay, one day before the, the 28th blackout day. Okay, fine, I understand. Okay, so 500, half a million square feet, 987. Had how much? 6 million square feet at NCCC um, Stadium. That was 500. So yes, location matters, days matter, events matter for Snapchat. So pros and cons about that is uh, you can, of course, uh, create a filter at a popular location. Downside is it may be more expensive. Yes? So there can be only one filter for a location? <coughs> Whoever gets it first? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I don't doubt that there are different tiers, that the more you pay, the, then you could block out others. Um, it could be that, you know, being close enough. So they've got this whole radius right here. Uh, maybe I could make mine slightly outside of the radius. And then if someone's at the parking lot or at the, at the hotel, so right here I'm going to be outside of their radius. Right here, I'm not inside of the radius. Forty-five thousand square feet, four hundred seventy-three dollars. So when someone's walking to the parking lot to the stadium, <coughs> that's where I can catch it. I don't know if it's that creative that you can cut out areas of your shape. I think you have to manually draw where you want it, but that'd be very useful. Draw a big square and just cut out the part in the middle. So people that are over here, you know, this corner, you catch them and over there. So there's always some sort of um, events at the convention center. While I'm here, let's see what would happen about trying to make a filter at the convention center. Uh, we have usually, of course, the famous one is San Diego Comic-Con, but there's, you know, a lot of other uh, uh, convention events happening there. So one million point two square feet, six hundred dollars. That's not bad. And so everyone that's there at um, the um, convention that's happening at the moment, that's how much that would be. So let's say that's what I want to do, check out. Well, then it's going to confirm here. Um, 
from the 20th to the 27th, 1.3 million square feet. There's your, your filter that people would see when they're at that location, $600. You put in your information and you go for it. Now they do, to some degree, uh, check your, your ad. They, they look at it, they see that it doesn't have any, that it doesn't go against their standards and, and that it follows their rules and, and all of that, and then they'll let you, they can then reject it or approve it. But um, that's the idea there that um, the process is, that this, is the, this is the way you would use it for a business. You create a filter that catches attention at a location, you set up days and then uh, area, you pay for it, and then people at that location will see it. It's still up to you for you to create an amazing ad, just like in the real world. That terrible ad is not going to make me any sales when they see it when I spent so much money on TV. And here I just picked whatever. But obviously, cats at the prom makes no sense to be putting it at that location. I would want to make something that makes sense and then add the link to go to my website and purchase. So that part is still up to you. Question. So does the price change depending on what the event is at the convention center? Is it that specific? It seems like it, yes. I don't know if it's sophisticated enough to know. The convention center is a unique case in that there's a bunch of conventions all year long. Definitely during Comic-Con time, they will most likely do their extra pricing because that's a big famous event there. But when I drove there a few days ago, they were shuttling people in for some convention of something, you know, uh, dentists or something. I don't know. They have a lot of conventions there. So I doubt that they are, that this is smart enough to know all of the convention is happening at that location. But I don't doubt that it's smart enough to have it set up in general about, well, this location, like the stadium, is usually going to be popular in the traffic, so it might as well charge them more. Coachella's blacked out? Hmm. Well, um, it already started, or it's going to start? It's blacked out for the weekend. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, night. Well, then you want to set up your filter one day after for the Coachella hangover event. So hangover cures. Hangover cures, yeah. So, um, it's pretty straightforward to do it. Now, there are, I would look at the, um, there's a few parts like community guidelines and support. There are going to be these that kind of explain and give you best practices and such. Advertising policies, brand guidelines. So just to see the other alternative under lens, create lens. Under lens, uh, I don't see upload. Right when we were in filter, you could upload your own. These are these built-in ones unless you go through Lens Studio. So this is the, the whole software that you can set up to create these animated lenses, these augmented reality things. If you go through this interface here, it's limited to what they've created. So we have, let's say, okay, birthdays. We've got these birthday these birthday filters you add some sort of text and then you set the dates you set the location you you check out so For the birthday celebration at the convention center, there is six hundred dollars. Through the web interface, you can create a filter. 
upload your own. But if you create, but if you wish to create your own um, lens, you should use uh, Lens Studio. Lens Studio is powerful um, software needed to be installed on your computer uh, that allows you to create your own lenses. You then purchase the lens through the app, through the software. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna. I have, you know, I have skills in uh, 3D animation or whatever, and I can make my own lens character. It's gonna be what I've seen is what you can do. For example, is upload your logo, the logo of your business, and you can make it animated. You can make it jump or spin or whatever, like a little character. So in Lens Studio, I upload my logo. I set it up that, you know, it's gonna, it's going to appear. When a person is at my location, and then they use the lens, they will see it there. It's jumping around, catching their attention. And it's the same idea that I set it for X amount of days, and, I, and uh, for a specific geographic location, and then um, I, pay, I pay for it. Yes. It would work in a roundabout way. It, if if you okay, the idea is you create this lens of your animated logo, and then someone is at the location. They they take a snap of it. They can then save it to their camera roll. Then they can send it to Facebook or whatever. The roundabout way is you've created your own logo animation and all of that. Well, you have to then go uh, on your own device to see your own logo make the snap of your animated logo and then save it to your camera roll and then you can send it to your Facebook. There might be a way, I haven't fully explored it, that as you create these animations you then can directly save them to uh, you know, your, your, your computer to then send them to, to Facebook. I'm not sure. You probably will be able to do that eventually but right now to my knowledge this Lens app is still like on version 1 they're still kind of figuring out all the details. But when you say snap, then that's just like a still, a still shot, or do you mean the whole animation? No, if it was animated, when uh, a snap can be an, uh, a video or a still photo. So uh, I believe it'll still save animated. The only issue is that, well, if I have to take a photo of myself with the animation, well, I'm going to be in the in the photo in the animation. That's the um, that's the big idea with uh, Snapchat for business in terms of uh, you create an ad. Ultimately, it boils down to it's an ad, and then you <clears throat> set it at a location for a date and time, and then you pay, and then it's up to people then to use it and. Um, 
follow through. So the theory is that you know people are using it. Oh, there's there's some there's a lot of snapping going on at San Diego Zoo. This is public the public story there. So seven minutes ago, San Diego Zoo itself has shared this. See, he kind of copies zebras. What? Zebras? 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 Okay, so um, this is definitely one of the networks where uh, being hands-on is is a good thing. So I'm going to end the main lecture. Um, I'll take questions about Snapchat, and then if if we don't have more of those, then we'll do a little lab time. If you'd like to. Um, try these things out yourself. We'll have lab time until until one. But any uh, general questions then on, on, how, on what we've talked about regarding Snapchat today? Yes? I missed the first couple minutes of class. How long has Snapchat been around? And I know you're talking about stocks in the beginning um, and what the original intention was for Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Is there a decline or is it because they're changing things and trying to reach a larger audience? They're still... Well, according to this, um, Snapchat is six years old, founded in September 2011. Uh, I didn't quite remember that. Their, um, their user growth has been increasing. They're at 187 million or so. So they have been increasing um, uh, stock price-wise. Their stock has not been doing that well. Uh, it's a very volatile stock because um, you know it's very tied to celebrity popularity, and when celebrities put it down, then the stock price goes down. Um, I think um, depending on what your product is or your target audience, it could work very well if you've got that demographic, young demographic, cutting edge demographic, I don't know, hipster demographic, whatever. Uh, if you've got that kind of demographic, it could work very well. What I had said earlier was, well, perhaps for many of us, let's say I've got you know a daycare center, or I've got a, a bakery, or I've got you know let's say a serious business. I don't think it's going to be that useful. Uh, you, but you never know. You you could invest you know those five dollars like I showed about putting a geo filter, and it may work. And all of these networks, I can say that about that. Try it. There's usually the free aspect to try out that. Um, can get your feet wet and you can figure out if it's useful or not. Uh, I think it's going to be around. I, there's speculation that it could get bought by something else. That may be good or bad. I, I don't know. Uh, just investment-wise, I wouldn't invest in it. For business-wise, I would use it. I would try it. Unless my business really, really is a very you know serious one. That might not work very well for the audience. But Snapchat is trying to reach more of an audience besides its original core one of you know, high school students, college students, young adults, whatever it originally was. And I think it will uh, try that for a while before it tries to give up because you know, it spent a lot of time and money and effort on those spectacles and, you know, and that didn't work out, but they tried it for a few years. And I, and I think they would try to keep growing um, to see what would work. Yes. I wanted to get in to see who's in that, what accounts are in that Discover to target them for creation of content, just set up those three accounts. Can you just set up, just get a Snapchat account and that would open up that 
ability to get into the Discover section. Yes, exactly. Um, that Discover screen, um, that's one of its selling points, one of its unique things. It's similar to Twitter's moments, uh, but it's like more creative, I think. So yes, to see most of these unique things about the app you would need about Snapchat, you would need to um, create an account and get into it. And that's an example again where you can just uh, create it very basically or fake or whatever and just to get into it and then you can uh, get what you need out of it. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm going to put these notes in the network folder. I'm going to upload the video if you want to replay the lecture. Uh, if you were here on a previous month, it is a different link um, for this semester. <laughs>